Welcome to this exclusive interview with one of the most prominent table tennis players in history. He's been called the eternally green tree and is uh, a half god in China. He's the man, the myth, the living legend, Jan Ove Wallner. Thank you. <laughs> so, uh, I was looking at, at, at your different achievements and, and just talking about um, the winning achievements. You won one Olympic gold, you two times world champion in singles, mm. and four times world champion in teams. Yeah. Mm. That, that is an amazing record, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, and also I was lucky to play with really, really good players, not only with Appen and Jürgen. Our team was already always, uh, sometimes we had five from top ten players in the world, so mm. it's... It's not only my thing that he was winning the well, team, but you are we playing the best team in the world, you know. So it's I played in the, one of the best teams in the world ever. So it's mm. fantastic. He is very humble because you were one of the key players during these years for Sweden from the early 1990s yeah. and then onwards. But you, I, you, you, you played and won also. Uh, s some some uh, some championships as as a double play. Why didn't you play more double? Uh, I played double. I, I mean, I won the uh, European Championships, I think, with uh, Eric Lynn, Appelgren and Persson. So uh, my double was also good. And uh, the most one I was, was I think, the, uh, that we lost was uh, Jürgen and me had the uh, chance to win one time with Kong Ming Hee and Ligo Liang. And uh, I think it was before I played the final against uh, Samsonov in Manchester. It was only one hour before. I think it was up like 12 9 in the last set, 2 2 mm. 12 And this was tough. And then we had also some good chances at the Olympics. But it's tough in double, and especially also when you're uh, far away in the single. Uh, yeah. it's, it's, uh, sometimes it's really tough. But I'm happy with the results in Dubai. I mean, three times European champion, one time in of the final. Course. It's not so bad. It, <laughs> it's not so bad. You, you happen to forget those yeah. things because you're looking at yeah, the gold medals. It's, <laughs> it's the same there. I also play with Lind, Appelgren and, and Persson. Mm -hmm. So you need a good partner. Otherwise, it's difficult to win. Of course. <laughs> yeah. But let, let's start from the beginning. Uh, you grew up outside Stockholm. Um, how, tell us about your, your youth. Oh, uh, I start, uh, I think, when I was six years old. With my brother, we played in the summer house. Uh, my grandfather had some, some table outside, so we played both tennis, table tennis. We played all the uh, racket sports, you know, and uh, football, of course. So I played this a long time also. But uh, then when I was six, I joined the club, Sportwagen, who mm -hmm. was my club all my career, the, where I start. So it was really good club. And in the beginning, they only take my brother in. He was eight. Because I was, you know, I was not so tall also this time, so they to took me like a mascot, you know, oh, yeah. in the beginning. Okay. But then after two, ah, I think it was really quick. After two times when I practiced, as you in, you're too good. Because so and I could also always play with all the guys then also, so it was really good. Yeah, you you had a, a very big talent, as I understand. Yeah. You you could see already from yeah. the start at, at the age of six that you had you had a talent. Yeah, I think so. And many told this going to be a new. World champion, blah, 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 you know, it's not mm -hmm. so easy, you have to practice really hard and with the talent and also the split vision I have for the sport. I think I, I, think I was born to play, be a table tennis player. But you... I'm not so tall, but I'm enough tall to play. I was okay fast. I was good also with the, to read the game and also with the tactic. I think it was my big strength mm -hmm. in the game. Tactic and read the game. And, uh, but it was, it was difficult because I had the same feeling for soccer when I play soccer and also tennis so it was different to say which one was better for me but in the end I think uh, I chose the right one because in soccer now at the moment you have to be quite big maybe I, I, I don't know if I was enough and I was m maybe not enough fast also to play this mm -hmm. game but tennis was I like very much also it's a little bit like table tennis you, you, I can read the game also quite good uh. mm -hmm. and both table tennis and tennis were big sports mm. during yeah. the, the yeah. 70s in Sweden yeah. and, and that of course influenced you, I, I would imagine. Yeah, I mean, it was two channels this time. All the time it was Björn Borg, all the time it was Ingmar Stenmark. And then in the evening with all with Stella Banks and Charlie Johansson. All matches we could see, you mm. know, Swedish Open sometimes you could see already from the quarterfinals. They show live. And I mean, also when you have only two channels and it's every European league, it was live when they play. 
So then it's of course it's easy that you start to play table tennis. And this th this guy was also big stars. Stella was world champion singer. Shelly Johansson was only some balls uh, to win this also. Mm -hmm. So it's uh, really two big superstars in Sweden. And also it's why I start to play. A really good sportsman. As I understand there was there was almost a table tennis table in, in every garage in Sweden yeah. at that time. Yeah. Also, when I lived in in my first place, we have downstairs we have some table, and sometimes I don't have to go to the hall to practice. You know, I play with my father and brother downstairs mm -hmm. in, the, where there is some circle and some garage or something. You know, in the mm -hmm. place, and also in the school, uh, on the long breaks we play. Uh, then we went up when we have 40 minutes. Sometimes with a long break, then we play soccer. But on the short one, we always play table tennis when it's for this for 15 minutes break. And in all schools, you, you remember also yes. those tables, so it was really good for, for, to have to do some sport these times. You, you mentioned your, your, or I mentioned your talent, you're talking about your, your ability when it comes to tactics yeah. and also your, your vision of, of, of the game. You also must, I guess, have a will to win. Yeah, I think it was the same even with my brother and me and also the guys I play with all the time. We have this, for us we're winning everything, you know. Even if you play cards or something, or if you play some other sport in golf, we, or it doesn't matter. Every sport we, we 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 did our best to win, and I think it's also good for mentally to have this mm. that all the other also want to win. Then you want to win more. Okay. Then, then, huh? yeah. So it, I think it was good. But when, when looking at you off off the, the the court or when we're sitting here, you seem very relaxed and very cool. Uh, but table tennis is is the opposite. How how do you switch? to be able to be so on the edge and so so much on the game to actually achieve what you have achieved. Oh yeah, it's, it's a fast sport, you know, if you lose some some concentration. So in the matches, it's, I mean, five, six balls could go so fast away, you know. And uh, <clears throat> also you have to be good prepared for the matches. You know, a lot of running, physical things. I did a lot also when I was playing. So it was really important because then you can concentrate good in the matches. And you know, like we, we play when on our time, we sometimes play five, six matches, tough matches mm -hmm. in, in one day. So you need uh, to be really good focus and, and also to be strong, uh, physical, to be really strong there also. But uh, sometimes it's really difficult to concentrate if something happens, you know, you're a little bit unlucky, start with edge and you should win this set and then you have to start from the beginning again. So sometimes it's really difficult. But. Uh, for most of the time, I, it, it works very well for me. How, how do you prepare, or did you prepare for a game to, to get into that bubble or that mode? I was, uh, I could change it. It was okay. You have some rules that you did, you know. Uh, but we already practice, you know, to last 20, 25 minutes before the match. So then you don't think so much about the match. And then the last thing before we was gluing, you know, you had. Uh, I can also sit like we sit now and then go into play, but mm -hmm. I want to be warm, you know, also that uh, I'm into the match direct. This mm -hmm. was really important for me because I know if I can start good, it, it should be really difficult to beat me. And I, chose the, I, I, I showed this uh, many times when I played, you know, in big tournaments. It was not so often I lost some sets, you know, world championships, right. I won 21 zero. And uh, Olympic class when I won, I, uh, I won all matches without one. I only lost one set, and this set I had 1960 against Roscoff. So I was really good to come into the tournament and didn't lose. Okay, in some small tournaments I sometimes lost some stupid sets. Mm -hmm. You know, I was uh, my concentration was not bad. But in mm -hmm. the big one, I was always there. That I is amazing. Yeah. And then uh, quite young. You got the chance to go to China and study them and mm. practice with them. Tell us about that. Yeah, it was really important. I was 14 and we have been there for three weeks. We play first we played China Open and it was the first time when I played with so much spectators. I think it was 15, 16,000 spectators and I played against, I think, one defense guy from Japan and I won one set. I was really happy because I was so young. It was my first big tournament and after me and Eric Linden, and on the show, as coach, cool stay there to, to practice for four weeks. This was really important. And then I learned me how, how to practice hard for the first time, really hard. Mm -hmm. And also the culture from a different country was also important because it was not like at home. The hall was very wet and difficult and 
Det nere du hamnar och drinks you know, in, the, in the hall and so, so much and long exercise also you were really tired. And then they start with this many balls also from the box when they start to play this. This was where, where, where it start for us with you, like we call it many balls practice and this was really tough. I was so tired sometimes but it's helped me a lot. So um, you talk about the, the commitment amongst the, the Chinese player that you learned that you really have to commit yeah. uh, and uh, many balls practice. Yeah. I know that, that you should for yourself um, tell, tell us how many serves did you practice during a normal practice? Yeah, first you practice normal, you, you make also exercise with service, but then after the practice, I stay always like 30 40 minutes after every uh, every practice. I don't know how many balls I play, maybe, maybe I don't how many service, maybe. 500 service, 400 mm. after after the practice, and this was uh, including the practice. After you, you relax and you come down and then you stay with the balls mm. to make service. And also I learned, you know, I had quite good service also when I was 14, but I learned a lot, you know, f I was watching around to see them, how they practice and how they did with the long service and everything. So I learned a lot with the service in the beginning in China. Mm. We've seen you master the, the service technique uh, miraculously and, and fantastically. You've done the, the straight, the cross, you've yeah. done um, a, lot of, a lot of trick serves. And you also had the ability to, to change serve, to, um, to get a special serve when, when, the, when it was a, a crucial setup in the, in the match. Yeah, I think it was... Uh, yeah. You always, it's, sometimes it's good to try some new service when it's a little bit closer because mm -hmm. both are nervous and maybe something new is coming, it's always good. And this is, I think, uh, the guys who have the best service always have some new service, short, long, some different things. If you only have one, two service, it's easy to read the play, then you can move in so much faster. And uh, even today, I think also it's, it was coming back a little bit with the long service mm -hmm. because everyone is on, over the table now to flip, you know, and. More and more start with the long service. So I think this is coming back a little bit like before. We mm -hmm. played also a lot of long service. Mm -hmm. So it's interesting. And then um, during the 80s, China was very, very dominant. And you still practiced, uh, the, the team still practiced yeah. uh, versus China. And then in Dortmund in 1989, finally Sweden beats China, breaks the Chinese wall and wins the final with five matches to zero. Yeah. What what had you learned then? What had you achieved then in order to make it possible? Yeah, it was, I think already in 87 we had a really, really good chance to beat China. But then I was I started to be sick, I had fever, you know, I was in the bed. It's the only match I, I missed from all my career. But I was so sick and, I, and then I only went to the bed for five, six days. I had a lot of fever and then I came back in the single to really beat them. Uh, very high. So I think it is even 87 we could win. But then 89 I think we was better prepared, we were stronger, we we played a little bit closer to the table. And we start some uh, new training with Glenn Ost. He did some uh, physical other trainings and, and we played a lot of this many balls practice and yeah, I think uh, it was the best time from uh, all the play I mean Eric Lind was not playing quarter final, semi final and final. He was number four in the world. So we had a quite good team. <laughs> quite. But I think it was our time and we knew how to play against the pen all the style this time. And after they had problem after this match, they start to change the team very much. And I think in Olympic 92, they play only shake and play mm. So they had problem after 89. But so. it's not so easy to change if you win all the time and you can lose one time. They lost one time there. But uh, during the years to come after Dortmund, you won a lot of championships, yeah. both single and uh, and also yeah. as a team. Yeah. Tell us about the, the memories. What do you remember of those, of those the time? In 89, I mean, from 89 to 92, it was nearly perfect. It, I played all good all the time, and I was in, in the next final again against Persson, and I won with him in 89. And 92, I won the single uh, in Olympics. And after that, I won nearly all tournaments uh, I played after that, so it was a really good time. I think it was my best time. I think physical, I was, uh, as my best shape was uh, 92. Now it's Apple calling. He's, maybe he heard something I spoke about him, you know, okay. shit. <laughs> then it's <laughs> uh, Yeah, but uh, I think physical, I was best uh, 92 also. Uh. I was practicing really hard for this uh, Olympic Games.
The Olympic so Games, nice. of, of course, it's 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 such a mega event, and you beat Gatien in the final. Can you tell us uh, about the final, the feeling, and and the memories you have from it? I, I, I like I say before the match, I say I had a really good chance to win. And I, I, uh, I played always good against him, but the thing was that he was coming from free to free to free to. He won so tight match, and I was more clear when I would come to the final. And my feeling was already in the third set: please win now, otherwise it can be this long one, and then it's really, really hard to beat him because if you have so much confidence, if you win free to all the time, and if he win f third set, I won free zero. But if he win the third set, I think. Maybe the four of us will start to think, and then probably it's a uh, last set, and then it will be really tough. Because mentally, he was, I think, Philo was one of the top five best players, I think, mentally. So it was really important that I could have won the third set there. Looking back at your career, is it something you're not so happy about? Mm. I, I, I will not say like this because. It's a little bit strange if I sit and say, oh, I, have so, I was not so lucky. And, and yeah. I mean, with the results, it's difficult to say something. Oh, of course. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm, I, I'm not this type of guy. I'm mm -hmm. always looking forward. So I know I'm happy with everything. And also that I lost sometimes. This was really important for me, some big finals. Otherwise, probably I was, I would not practice so hard like I did after. Mm -hmm. And it started really good for me, 82. I was so happy to play the final. I won two sets against Apple. In this final, and I, I said to him many times, "Thank you that you beat me because this helped me in the future." I think if I win when I'm 16 years old, what else? Is I mean, yeah. then it started to be a little bit stupid. Uh -huh. And uh, so I, when I lost there, and, I, and also that I didn't win, you know, European Championships. Apple beat me one time in one semi-final 90. This was also really good for me. Otherwise, then I, I had something to practice to win uh -huh. European Championships, and then I won it. So it was good, I think. Sorry. Sometimes it's good to lose. Yes, but I not, was just gonna... but not often. <laughs> not often, and not the finals. Not, not the, the finals. <laughs> yeah, sometimes the... final because then you want that's to win next time. That's also. true. So it's okay also uh -huh. something. Uh, the, a big lesson to learn, all you youngsters yeah. out there. You finals need is not to... too bad. Right, you need to lose sometimes yes. in order to be the champion, the number one. Then you're more hungry. True. So, um, if you is it possible to choose one memory from your career that you feel? This is the most important or you're most proud or happy about? If it's only for me, I would say 92 Olympics. Because uh, the other finals, or when I won with Jürgen, is different because then two Swedish are playing in the final. Swedish guys, they don't care who is winning, you know, and Swedish people, you know. So. But when you win Olympics, everyone is watching this. And also when you beat the French guy in the final. I was the only one who won Olympic Games this time for, for Sweden, so mm. I have to choose this one. And team is easy, mm -hmm. 89, of course. So this is maybe the two biggest for me. And if we just quickly also should look at, at Sweden today, after that golden generation that you were a part of uh, finished playing, uh, Sweden lost ranking and didn't play very well for, for many years, but now it seems like Sweden is is back on the on the right track again. Yeah, I think so. I mean, uh, and also because they don't send so much in television sometimes. And now it's really perfect when we play at home. It's all the time in television. So this will this will help the tournaments in the future. But it's, uh, everyone says bad. You know, we have European champion for juniors, Anton Schalberg. We have Trulls who was in the final for juniors. And you know, if something happened in football, they, they win one match. They write like this about this, and only this about table tennis. So it's not easy to compare. And we, now we have number 19 and 20 in the world. We have five, six plays, top 100. It's not so bad. Yeah. I mean, we have only 10 million in mm -hmm. Sweden, so it's not so bad. Yeah. And how to compare with 1.4 billion in China? It's impossible. In the, okay, you can do it for some years, but mm -hmm. now we are back again. And, I think our ranking is always like this, semi-final European Championships is okay, quarter-final World Championships, it's been like this all the time. But now it looks really good again. Nice I'm to hear. happy. You played your last official game early 2016. Uh, do, do you have any connection with table tennis today? Uh, yeah, of course we played some exhibition, me, Jürgen and Apple, of course, so, and uh, some matches. Uh, Exhibition matches and uh, it's good, you know, with table tennis. Many ask for for us to play some exhibition matches, so we have a good uh, good life with this now. And uh, we are all in the table tennis. 
And also, of course, I work a lot for a Swedish company to come in China. I'm a little bit, uh, we can call it, I'm opening the doors for them a mm. little bit. To, to, if they want to come in China, they can connect me and I do something for them. So I work with all the big companies in Sweden, you know, IKEA, Volvo, Ericsson, Eglad Krulux, you know, f- and this I started already when I played in Kalmar in the middle of 80s. Then I was with Ericsson, mm, okay. Kia contract and also with Electrolux. So. And it, then it was only going on, so it was really perfect for me when I stopped to play after the last match. I go from the national team and then I play some matches in the league. It was perfect and I knew what to do also. This was very important. I have some people who's working for me who's really good, so I'm happy with this. Mm. And what do you do then on your spare time when, when you don't play the exhibition games or doing the business? Then I go to soccer matches when my favorite team Hammarby is playing. <laughs> I think you also like them, huh? I, I, I've heard of Hammarby. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then, of course, with, uh, like always with Appel, he's living 10 minutes from me. I think we speak around 10 times every day, so uh, we are going together. And, of course, I like to play golf, like all the table tennis players. Mm. Could you have been equally good in golf, you no, think? No, I think my swing is too bad. I think soccer and uh, tennis was my best chances. Mm. But golf... Yeah, then you need, and also it's only swing, swing, swing. I want the ball is moving a little bit when you can make some rotation. <laughs> this I like. Will we see you as a coach or a trainer or something in the future with the, in, in table tennis? First of all, I was playing and uh, working so much with table tennis, and now when I stop, I like to do a little bit new business with China and this. And now I try this, and we have some good team who's working with this. And Okay, if it's a little bit less thing, sometimes you know I go eight, nine times to China every year. Mm. So I had no time, and it's not fair if you come only two days in a week and then suddenly you're away for three weeks. But maybe in the future, I like to coach, coach right. play. I, uh, this is, I, th- I think it's really fun. So, so no- I will be in later for sure. Okay. As maybe with my club, or I think, or something like that. So ma- maybe there's there's a young guy or girl watching right now, who will be. Uh, a lucky pro- <laughs> prodigy or whatever, a, a lucky student for John Wolvalder in the future. You never know, <laughs> and uh, because I was a good player, it's not sure I'm a good coach. This you never I, know. This is, or the, trainer, the, you never know. The future will tell. Yeah. John Wolvalder, thank you ah, very thank much. You. Really good seeing you. Yeah, thank you, you for this interview and thank you for all the oh. magic moments and all the fantastic memories on the table tennis court. You are welcome. <laughs> thank you.